So just as a caveat, uh, this is me at the end of the video coming back to the beginning to say something as a preface to what I talk about here. This is the instance of it's it's not all sunshine and rainbows in grad school. Uh, I made some fun graphs to describe how grad school went over the summer, or grad school related stuff went over the summer, and a lot of those graphs communicate uh, some negative things about how I was feeling and how I was doing. Uh, and so that's not to say that I'm not doing okay now. Um, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm feeling a lot better than I was this summer. Uh, and to, and that's, and, and this video is primarily for me to look back on in like a year or two, just to see how things went. Uh, when, or even after the PhD, just to watch again and see like, oh, this is how you were doing at this time in your life. Uh, so to my friends and my professors who have found my channel and now watch my stuff sometimes, which feels weird, uh, this is not the happiest video, but it's still something I felt I wanted to document because I think it is important to just say when stuff wasn't great. Um, even though a lot of good things did happen this summer. So um, we're gonna, we're gonna preface it with that. And uh, yeah, well, I, we, I should start talking about graphs, right? Hey, it's Nathan. It's past my bedtime. I'm in PJs. And uh, I should probably talk about how my summer went because I haven't done that yet. Uh, I, I did, I did a lot of, a lot of things. And at the end of the day, I would say that I was not a happy person this summer at all. Uh, <laughs> well, for the most part. And so as a child, when I was, well, I guess uh, as a teenager, as a young, young teenager, uh, and also sometime into high school, uh, I really enjoyed drawing graphs. Um, it was something I learned how to do when I started learning calculus uh, for the first time in like sixth grade. And I just found it very therapeutic that you could take these functions and use calculus to get out these pretty accurate graphs using tables of variations and things like that. I used to actually like go in and mess around with different functions and try to make really weird graphs. And uh, since then, I've sometimes used graphs to sort of just try to express how I felt about certain things. And so this video is basically the, the Nickelback meme of a look at this graph, uh, but with um, graphs that I have on my phone that describe how I felt this summer about different things or how certain things went. So the first graph that I'll talk about is, is, is this graph. It looks really simple. You could define it in a piecewise way if you wanted to, uh, but the way I'm gonna define it is as the function takes on real values of the interval, but what you do to that real value, th that real value that you plug in there, is you evaluate the signed measure that is given by the difference of two finite Dirac measures, uh, namely the Dirac measure with concentration at seven and the Dirac measure with concentration at ten. And this graph represents when I got my qual results back and what the results were since taking my last qual of the summer. So I passed one and I later found out that I failed one. I'm gonna get into each of those here in a second as well, but just to get that out of the way, my main goal for the summer, I was, I well, I, if you do it percentage-wise, I failed. I got 50% of what I wanted. Um, but I accomplished a big thing this summer, which was I passed a qual. And I have, I think it's three, more attempts. It's like three or four more attempts to pass a second one to be done with the PhD standardized testing that I have to go through for my degree. But yeah, uh, before I get into the, the horrors of my mental state around studying for quals, I am going to go ahead and talk about this graph, which in order to generate this, you have to do a few things. So first you have to define a list a, a, a logistic curve. You have to define a logistic curve first. So you have a logistic curve, it has some parameters, define it as so. Uh, so you take one of those logistic curves and then you take a logistic curve and you compose it with a square function. And then you also 
take an signed exponential and you just add all of those together in a floor function and you take the value on the inside and you scale that up so that the floor will create the steps and you just divide it all by how condensed you want those steps to be. Um, and so that's how you get this thing and this graph represents my overall knowledge of nerdy things like D&D &D over the summer. Uh, so Dungeons and Dragons has been something that even since I was really little, I always like read about it and would be like, that would be cool. It would be cool to, you know, get a group of people together and build a world and a story that we all could interact with and tell to each other as a collective group. I think that sounds awesome. And I just have never gotten to try it. And so uh, the summer, one of the things that I wanted to try was to try playing D&D. &D. Uh, just never got around to it. And instead, what ended up happening was I watched way too much. Well, I, I say watched, but it played in the background. A lot of Dimension 20 played in the background while I did chores and uh, like cooked. And so it's just one of those things that now I really want to try. Just makes me think positively. And that's that's a plus because I am a worry wart if I've ever known one. That that nerdy little nugget of my desire aside, uh, I should probably talk about quals uh, because this is about me documenting part of my PhD experience, right? And so the first graph I'm going to put up is this blue one. Um, this one is fun because you get it by adding together a slight bastardization of normal curves. Uh, and then at some n value, you just flip the sign of the curve. So the thing about algebra is that it was the qual that I did not pass this fall, which was not great because if you've been around a while, um, I made a video about it a while ago about what would be on the algebra qual and I did the whole like Claire Staffitz reading the ingredients, but it was the qual syllabus thing. I prepped for it all last summer and then I prepped for it this summer, and then also during my algebra class itself, uh, comparing it to how I did an analysis, the feedback that I had gotten back was that I was, on average, a better communicator in algebra than I was in analysis. And so this blue curve that's somewhere on screen now uh, sort of reflects just how quickly that changed. Um, so the rising part of the graph is just me studying and doing problems and feeling like I'm getting progressively better at recalling the material and like going to problem sessions and working through problems with the group and doing all that. And I felt pretty good about it. Uh, I felt like I was going to be fine with algebra. Algebra did not cause me a lot of stress until about two to three weeks away from the test. I don't know what it was, but at some point in the past, like two to three weeks before the test, I just couldn't make it through a practice qual by myself. And so it just like sort of got progressively worse until the morning of the exam where I sat down and took it. And the thing about taking the exam was that, uh, Basically, the moment that I saw the format, not even read the problems, but the moment that I saw the format of the test was the point at which I was like, I am going to fail this exam, uh, which is a very weird thing. It, it really sucked because that was what I had put a majority of my time into learning and per, like not perfecting, but like getting better at because I obviously didn't perfect it because I didn't pass the qual. But uh, that was what I put my time into because it was my weakest subject in undergrad. A lot of the things that I did in the course and for studying for the qual I had seen before. So uh, in many ways, by my own standard of like, this should have just been recall, I did not perform at my standard, uh, which is not fun. It's, it's also not fun to make a video about it where you say it to people on the internet. Um, but it's a thing that's true. And it's just the reminder that, you know, grad school is not an easy thing. It's still a difficult thing that requires a lot of commitment. And sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to. So next graph is actually formed in a very similar way. You go ahead and you do the sum of your normal curves and then you take that sum thing 
function and you multiply it by a sine function and there's some piecewise stuff with a rational function hanging out in there as well. Uh, this graph is what is my experience with studying for the analysis qual and then eventually taking it. Uh, so a lot, lot more chaos in my confidence level behind analysis than with algebra. Analysis was something that I was constantly worried about over the summer because I knew I was putting more time into algebra, and there were days when I looked at analysis problems where I just couldn't do it. I would sit down and look at a practice test, and I would not be able to start any of the 13 given problems without scouring the internet for different approaches to how to start them, or different ideas or similar problems on how to approach those problems. And that like oscillation between some days where I could do the like required eight problems in four hours and be great uh, to not being able to do anything or not having the motivation or energy to or the like general good mood to try uh, got progressively worse throughout the summer. Then I had the algebra test <laughs> because that came first. There was still the residual notion of like, you're not going to be able to pass this thing that you've studied more for than you ever had before. How are you going to pass this other thing that is way more important to your career as a PhD student uh, and grad student than this thing that you spent all your time on and failed? But yeah, after like quickly skimming over things for analysis, I, I went to bed, or tried to, I was very upset about how I performed on algebra and didn't really sleep that much that night. And then I got up and I went to school and I sat down for the eight hour test. And upon getting the test, I was able to just do seven out of the eight required problems. And then I just sort of flipped a coin on the last one. Analysis went really well. I, I passed it. It, it was the it was the only other exam I took and I already said I passed one. So that's the one I passed. So this next function I won't spend a ton of time on. It's just uh, Takagi's function product with the identity function subtracted uh, with a rational function to give it the asymptote. And then I just put a piecewise thing in to show how drastic the change was between the two things. But uh, this graph represents the intensity of my mental state over the summer, and uh, in in mostly this is in terms of my anxiety around my qual tests. Uh, so as we got closer and closer to taking algebra, it just went shot up and just was not a good time at all. And then, well, after staring at my fridge for two hours and then the magical power of getting like one to three hours of sleep before your next big major PhD exam, uh, it just sort of dropped down to normal levels of anxiety. And then it steadily decreased as I sat down for the analysis exam and was able to do all of the problems and then rose a little bit while I was trying to finagle the last problem I had to do. But anyway, uh, so that's that graph. And then the last one, uh, without explaining it uh, too much, is titled My Urge to Fly to Hawaii and Take a Job as a Farmhand. Um, or alternative title, How Much I Connected with the First 36 Seconds of Brutal by Olivia Rodrigo. The main story behind this graph is that I think I did way, way too much this summer. Um, worked on three different research projects, taught a class, coordinated a study group, attended another study group, and then also was studying for two quals independent of all of that other stuff. To be supported by my department and make enough money to stay in my apartment and pay rent, uh, I just had to teach the class. I didn't have to take a qual this year. I didn't have to do research this summer. I didn't have to participate in study groups or anything like that. I just had to teach a class. And I had to teach a class for five weeks. But I went way overboard. Um, and there were a lot of times this summer where I just wanted to stop. And again, this video is not about grad school being necessarily like a, a good positive thing. Uh, it's more just a reminder that, you know, uh, grad school is a lot of work. 
um, and it's what you make it. And the summer I made it too much. <laughs> um, and in hindsight, I see that for sure because a lot of things suffered because of me doing too much. Grad school is not for everyone and it's a stressful thing and that's okay. Uh, for me, it is important to go out there and contribute to this thing, uh, being math, uh, that has been a net positive in my life. But I know that the summer was not a good time and that's okay. That is, that's okay. <laughs> it's not all, it's not all sunshines and rainbows, which I think I've said already in this video. Uh, sometimes grad school is just difficult. There's a lot of cool things that I get to do, um, and I'm excited to continue doing them. And yeah, that's sort of where I am right now with grad school. Anyway, uh, that's basically it for this video. So if you enjoyed listening to me talk about my PhD experience, I've got other stuff where I've talked about PhD stuff in the past, I also have math videos on this channel where I talk about math things. Uh, so you can go check those out and subscribe if you enjoy that stuff. Uh, you can give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or just thought it was insightful from all of the stuff going on. Uh, and, you know, tell me stuff. If you if you have things to comment on, the comments are there too. So drop me a comment. I'll say hi. Hi. Uh, and, uh, that's basically it for today. As always, I am Nathan. This one was Chocolates, and I will see you next time.